Um, so I'm originally from Jakarta, Indonesia, but I grew up moving around quite a bit, and I ended up going to art school in New York City at the Cooper Union. And um, I'm of mixed heritage, so my mother's from Ottawa, um, she's English-Canadian, and my father's from West Java, Indonesia. And so a lot of um, what I've always been interested in is different perceptions of the world, um, having moved around quite a bit and having these two different cultural spaces in my home. I've always been curious about how one perceives the other. And so a lot of my work uh, in this exhibition is informed by that. So I'm really interested in looking at, um, for instance, uh, coming from Indonesia, um, how has Indonesia been depicted historically? And specifically, how has Java been his depicted historically? Um, what are the um, inaccuracies and misperceptions there? And um, how can I work with those types of images? Um, so one of the things that I studied in school was printmaking, and printmaking includes woodblock, and etching, and uh, lithography and silkscreen, and printmaking was, was always um, a method of reproducing images and text, so it was the mass media of its day. And one thing that I'm really interested in in printmaking is not just the technique, but kind of the history of how images have been distributed and circulated, where they exist in the world and how people receive them and how that it starts to inform how people understand the world. So a lot of the works in this exhibition are based in looking at printed images um, and uh, printed objects and illustrations and trying to understand how these might have informed the perceptions of particularly Indonesia, um, but also Java. Um, a lot of these works start from looking at images. So often in my working process, I uh, find something that I'm struck by. It might be a photograph, it might be a textile, it might be a wallpaper, um, or it might be a news article. And then that kind of sparks me to look more into that image and to um, develop some work around it. For instance, the animation um, that is called Falling has a number of tusks that are falling uh, from the sky and just kind of piling up and piling up. And what sparked this work was uh, two, were two separate things. One was I saw a picture in a newspaper of a pile of tusks that had been poached um, that was being burnt to kind of try and, uh, uh, to try and get rid of the market for these tusks and to kind of hopefully prevent more killing of, of elephants. And that was just such a strange and resonant and powerful and violent image. The other was that uh, in one of my um, research trips, I was trying to find images of old prints of, uh, that depicted Indonesia in, in some way, and particularly animals from Indonesia um, in Europe. And I didn't find anything specific, uh, but I did find this strange book that was about, um, it was illustrations of hunting games. So different ways that people used to hunt animals as spectacle, you know, and, and how people would kind of celebrate the fighting of animals. And again, it was a very strange and violent and weird series of images, and they sort of stuck with me. And so what I ended up doing was I took some photographs of these prints. Uh, they were from about the 1500s, and I started tracing these prints and redrawing them, and I redrew them in a lot of different ways. So they ended up as um, lithographic prints that you see in the cut piece uh, by the ramp. They ended up as uh, elements of my drawings, um, and then I sort of redrew these tusks over and over and over again, and then compiled them into the animation. And so my working process tends to be quite loose in that way where I start with a picture that then leads to another series of pictures and then I figure out how to kind of put them together um, towards the end. So another thing that um, I'm quite interested in is patterns um, and ornamentation, decoration. Uh, and that's for a number of reasons. One is um, I think historically ornaments and decoration are seen um, as lesser arts, you know, they're sort of things that decorate the home, they're in a kind of domestic space, they're things that are kind of easily dismissed as being um, just something to make your life prettier or um, something to make your space more beautiful. And yet there's a lot of really interesting uh, political and gender and um, social context in ornaments and decoration. And so I've always been interested in things like wallpaper and textiles, in um, embroidery, and in um, not just who makes these things, but how they're used and what sort of images are circulating in them. So there's a few things that um, show up in the work. Uh, one is a reference to batik uh, cloths. And batik is, a, you're probably quite familiar with it, it's a, it's a method of making uh, drawings on cloth where you draw with wax 
and the wax resists the dye, and so you draw the, the, the white areas or the blank areas in wax, and then you dip the cloth in dye, and then you wash the wax off, and you do this over and over again until you get kind of a multicolored piece. So it has a similar logic to printmaking, but a very different process in printmaking. And batik um, is quite prevalent in Java, which is uh, where Jakarta is, uh, is, where I'm from. And it's, uh, it's kind of everywhere in your day-to-day -day life. Um, I'm wearing a batik scarf right now. Um, you know, it's in your school uniforms. People wear them on special occasions. You have pajamas and batik. You have paper decorated in it. So it's just a very kind of, in some ways, a very everyday type of reference. But there's very different types of patterns. There are patterns that historically were only meant for royalty, for instance, patterns that were made um, by um, companies that were Dutch owned and uh, meant for a more kind of Dutch oriented population. There are patterns that were made for more of the Chinese population and refer to kind of more Chinese historical imagery. And so I was really interested in how this, this cloth that is so identified with Java as a place actually reveals a lot of histories of who has come through Java and the different peoples that have lived in this space. So some of the um, images that you see on here are direct references to these bathic patterns. Um, there's these, uh, a lot of these blue clouds that you'll see with white, um, with white lining, for instance. And that's from a batik pattern called Megamandung from the area of Chirobon, which is where my father's from. And it's a pattern that I've always found really compelling. Um, and you see similarities in that pattern to other types of clouds you see around. Um, and I don't know enough about the history to know how it got there, but it's sort of, it's for me, it's a way to kind of refer to my own personal history, but also to speak about this place that has had a long history of trade. Another type of pattern um, you might see quite a bit is the uh, bende dot. So the bende dot is basically a series of small dots um, that are used in a printmaking process. So you start you seeing bende dots in the mid-1800s when photography is invented, and as soon as photographs are in, um, kind of enter the popular consciousness, people are trying to figure out how to reproduce photographs so more people can see it. One thing with printmaking is that you can only reproduce one flat color at a time. So in order to get a similar kind of tonal range as, as a photograph, you have to break up that color. You have to break up that tone into dots. And so these bende dots or halftone dots are a way of taking tones and, and reproducing them. And so for me, the bende dots became a way to refer to this very mechanical process of reproduction, something that we still see everywhere. So if you look at a newspaper photograph, you look at a magazine photograph, a book image, you, put a, you look at it under, under a magnifying glass, you'll see all these little dots. So it refers to this printing process and it refers to this process of reproduction and again to this process of how images are distributed. And for me, it was a way to kind of speak to this act of reproduction in a more contemporary way and to make sure that the pictures I was working with was not just referring to the past, but also was situated in the present in some way. I try and make work that is approachable from a, different, a number of different places so that um, one person might look at it and appreciate its um, attention to detail or its use of color, but someone who's from Indonesia might immediately recognize some of the elements and kind of know the backstory of that, but yet someone from a different place might know a totally different element. And so that I'm hoping that it doesn't have just a single reading, but that different people can look at it and get different things out of it and then try and kind of make up their own understanding based on the how I've put things together.